Hello friends, this is Jim here with Science Talk and um, I have an interesting uh, report to share with you about Mars. Now this is, some, this is a topic I have discussed before in the past and so sort of like a follow-up but this is very interesting because the uh, according to this uh, study that was uh, been published in the journal uh, Nature Geoscience with uh, Marco Giurana, uh, the principal investigator, it basically state that there's definitely methane on Mars. Now, is it a sign of life? Well, not necessarily, but we do know they're based on organisms here on Earth, the methanogens. Uh, there are bacteria that produce methane. So this methane, it could be an inorganic or, or an organic source, we don't know. But there, this study is saying there's definitely methane. And so this is thanks to the Curiosity rover. The Curiosity rover basically determined uh, the background levels of methane in Mars' atmosphere. And it cycles seasonally, and it peaks in the northern summer. So, uh, and the rover also detected two surges of methane, and this was inside the 96-mile-wide uh, or 154-kilometer-wide uh, Gale cr Crater. So, uh, this, is, uh, this is quite fascinating. As I said, it's not proof, but the methane is definitely a, uh, what's called a biosignature. Now, of course, uh, the gas could be produced by a number of geological processes, you know, for example, outgassing of any uh, volcanic activity, what have you. But, you know, it's there. It's been, uh, been discovered. So, um, this is a quote from the, the PI Marco uh, uh, Giovanna, who is of the Instituto Nazionale di Astrofisica in Rome. And he says, while previous observations, including that of Curiosity, have been debated, this first, first independent confirmation of a methane spike increases confidence in the detections. And as I said before, they're likely, uh, this, his team likely traced the source to uh, a June 2013 plume in the area east of Gale Crater. The researchers also used data gathered by the Mars Express Planetary Fourier Spectrometer Instrument, which was also able to detect uh, traces of uh, methane from Mars back in 2004. The spacecraft has been orbiting Mars since uh, December of 2003. So uh, this is now going on uh, 16, uh, well, 15 plus years. Uh, pretty remarkable uh, instrument there lasted all this time. So, um, what uh, G uh, Dr. Girana and his colleagues did was, and I'm going to give you a little background on the methodology, was they developed a new approach to the PFS data selection, processing, and analysis. Now, PFS is, of course, the, uh, the, the planetary Fourier spectrometer. So, when I say PFS, that's what I'm referring to. They found one hit a peak of about 15.5 parts per billion methane by volume on June 16, 2013. That was just one Martian day after Curiosity detected a peak of nearly six parts per billion. This is per billion, would it be? We were very lucky as this is not the result of co coordinated observations, just by chance. Well, you know what? Sometimes serendipity plays a good role in science. Sometimes it just, sometimes luck does shine a, a smile down on us. Just like, uh, you know, Einstein put forth his theory of relativity. Just so happened in 1919, there was a full solar eclipse. And they got to measure the change in the apparent positions of the stars, verifying Einstein and making him an overnight sensation, basically. Because up until that point there, People were kind of looking at Einstein's work and kind of going, oh, okay, 
it's interesting, but it's not testable, not provable. Well, they came up with the, the solar eclipse provided a perfect test. It verified some of uh, his uh, claims and what he published. And uh, relativity has basically set, uh, kind of defined a new era of physics. And we see relativity every day in our life. If you have a cell phone, it has GPS on it, and you get into an emergency and they know where to find you, well, it's due to relativity because the, the, the pace of time is not constant. It is an interesting thing. Anyway, I'm, I get a little sidetracked here, but um, you know, serendipity sometimes uh, helps out science. Let's just put it that way. So the study team also wanted to see if they could specify the uh, source for this uh, methane detection. And they utilized two different uh, approaches. So they divided the area around Gale Crater into a series of squares, each of them would measured basically 250 kilometers on a side, basically a grid system. This is a common practice in science, no matter if it's e ecological studies or what, what anything, you know, you divide up the ocean into grids to, to take measurements of whatever parameters you're interested in. It's a common practice in science to uh, take in a, a study area and, and divide it into grids. And it gives a very systematic way of sampling and uh, it gives you good data, etc. Uh, so basically, they use computer simulations to create one million methane release scenarios for every square to assess the probability of each one as a source for the gas that was detected from Gale Crater. The scientists also studied the geology of each square, looking for features that might be associated with methane emission, fault lines, fault intersections, that kind of, those kind of features. So Dr. Giorana basically states uh, remarkably we saw that the atmospheric simulation and geological assessment performed independently of each other suggested the same region of provenance of the methane, which is situated about 500 kilometers east of Gale. This is very exciting and largely unexpected. So basically, what that states is that the, the probability assessment and the geological assessment working independently all indicated the same regions to basically look of the possibility for where the methane came from. That potential source region may contain methane trapped beneath ice. In prior videos I've made on Mars and methane and ice, I've discussed that. That methane could be released episodically along faults that break through the permafrost due to partial melting of ice, gas pressure buildup induced by gas accumulation during migration, or stresses due to planetary adjustments or local meteorite impact. This is what the researchers wrote. The paper ultimately does not address the origin of the methane, whether it was you know, via the source of uh, microbes or non-organic uh, you know, uh, sources, you know, geological sources, maybe hot water interacting. They do not address that, probably because the instrumentation does not allow for that analysis. So another thing the scientists don't know if the detected methane was produced recently or long ago and that it had been trapped all this time before being released. But it does help researchers get to the bottom of each question eventually. For example, Mars Express will eye the potential source region in detail in the future. This is Dr. Diorana saying that. Other spacecraft such as the, uh, the Trace Gas Orbiter, TGL, which will design, designed to look for methane, which is part of the European-Russian ExoMars program, may also be able to detect methane. And uh, Dr. Giorana's team is involved with TGO, 
and it did arrive at the planet in the October 2016. And coordinated TGO Mars Express measurements are in the works. So they're collecting data, not, you know, you have to analyze it, that sort of stuff. The PFS team also aims to supply its new analysis techniques to the instrument's entire data set. So basically, you know, they're following up, which is what we do in science. As Dr. Dr. Giorana concludes, we are collecting pieces of a puzzle and need more pieces to understand better what is going on. So, methane on Mars. It's now been verified. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Hey folks, this is Jim here reminding you to please subscribe to my channel and please share my videos with others. Also remember to click the bell so that you know when I drop in a new video. I also ask that you please consider becoming a patron of my channel and support the work that I do by going to patreon.com forward slash science talk with Jim Massa, each word separated by an underscore, and becoming a patron. It's asking for as little as three dollars a month, cost of a cup of coffee, to support the work I do and keep my informative videos coming your way. Thank you. Thank you for your support.